Damien Saga is a new game that just got released not so long ago. At first, I was really skeptical knowing that this game is just another AFK game, but it has a high rating on Play Store, so I decided to give it a go. And oh boy, I regret nothing. Before we start choosing on what character you should be aiming for, let's start from the basic. Unlike any other press nothing FK games, this game's battle mechanic is actually pretty interactive. In this game, you can drag your character's ultimate to the destination that you wanted them to be. This part is important for many reasons. One of it is because in this game, there are plenty of characters that can infiltrate your backliners. Unlike most FK games where the backliners have the most thickest plot armor, fortunately, there's no such thing in this game, which makes this game really fun. Anyways, back to the battle mechanic, your tank will have a rough job in this game, as they have to protect from what is in front of them and from the one who infiltrated your backliners. The way you can control their ultimate really comes in handy, as you can use this to either reposition your tank or use your healer to protect a certain character. There are plenty of instances where I have to retry a stage with a different setup and actually form a strategy just to figure out on what team that worked best to beat the sage stage. So yeah, it is really fun. Oh, and as an FK game, this game doesn't limit your creativity in the forming team process as this game has no battle power penalty, as long as it is still in a sensible way of course, such as your character having a decent enough level, gears, etc. There are two auto battle functions in this game. The first one is the one that you already see, and the other one is where the AI automatically battling your stages. Let's just call it a continuous battle from now on. Next, this game is an FK game, so obviously it has an FK game system, but trust me on this one, it only gets better. The good part about this game is that the character link system is individual. Usually, it will take the lowest character level as the basis, but thankfully, it is not the case in this game. In this game, you only need to raise 3 characters to continue on progressing your story stages, which reduces the burden in leveling up your characters. I mean, yeah, obviously at the end with the more characters that you have, the more characters that you need to level up too, but by the time that happens, I believe you will be ready enough for it. But wait, it only gets better. Let's speak about the gacha. There are only two elements in this game, neutral and factions or regions. Factions are basically the RGB characters, whereas neutral is the Luxak and Wells territory. I personally don't care much about the neutral element, as my favorite characters mostly come from Akeroth faction. But anyways, the PT in this game is only at 30 on regular and red up banners. Only faction summon that has no PT. For the red up banner, you will get 5 shards per 10 pool, which means you will need 400 summons in total if you keep on missing the red up, which is highly unlikely. But wait, it only gets better. In this game, you can farm the faction shards or even some other SSR shards. So if you ever got stuck because of the character's gap or your summon just suck, all you have to do is to farm the character or the faction shards and pray that you will get the dupes of your favorite character from your desired faction shards. Wait, it only gets better. Remember, this game only has 30 as the summon PT, and in this game you can easily get the regular summon ticket. Doing your daily mission give you 2 tickets, union attendance also give you tickets, weekly missions also give you tickets, etc. As for the crystal, your stable source of income will be coming from union and arena. I think I have explained enough on what is the necessary for this game. So let's proceed to what you should do to progress your game faster. If you start playing this game right when this video is posted, then consider yourself lucky, because right now we are having a really OP support banner and even going. Iris, she is an all-in-one healer, buffer, and support. You will get a free SSR healer named Isabel from your login rewards letter. Next, on your one-time only unlimited beginner pools, you can either pick this glasses mate or elf archer as the DPS. Both are OP, but the elf archer is more OP. If I recall it correctly, you will also get another free SSR selector ticket, so I don't remember the list of the characters from that selector, but if you see someone named Siegfried, then pick him. 
He is the strongest, most versatile tank as you can drag his ultimate to either save your team or to push the enemy away. So yeah, he is really good. As for the last one, it is a flex. This guy named Kenichi is really good as well, and many other names, but I personally want you to play the game first, test the character by yourself, and judge by yourself. Just don't let these people's review affects or form your opinion as they probably don't even build them well during the test. Alright, now the first step is done. Next, push the story stages as far as you can and make sure to use the continuous battle function to progress your stages when it is unlocked. Focus on your 3 core units first, the priority is as follow. Your goal here to reach around chapter 11 to 13 as this is the place where you start getting the powerful gear. Speaking of gears, you can also get them from Union Raid, so make sure to join one. Don't forget to do your events, right now we are having a really generous event. You can get these ivories from this event on day 1 by just doing the missions, which is really nice. Next is to try to climb towers when you can, make sure to do the pirate dice daily as well as arena. Well, in short, do familiarize yourself with the game. Remember, your ultimate goal here is to progress stages as far as you can and blast the crystal that you get on the red up banner. Also remember, pushing stages far is necessary so you won't be hard on gold and XP income, so make sure to focus on that first. Lastly, when you feel that you are far enough into the mid game, there are two choices or paths that you can take. The first one is to continue to focus on your main three cores, so you can continue to push on story stages, but missing all the other contents. And the second one is to evenly distribute your XP to the other characters, or I would say it is a detour, so you can enjoy and won't be missing another contents. I think yeah, that is pretty much all. I hope this guide will help you. So, until next time.